Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for being here at Policy Exchange's summer party. My name is Daniel Finkelstein. I'm the chairman of the board of Policy Exchange, which means that I have uh, probably the most self-deluded job in uh, any of think tank world, which is that I pretend to be in charge of Dean Godson. Uh, anyway, um, we are gathered here, of course, in a place that has been named after Dean, Dean's Yard, um, it, in order to uh, establish his control of the entire area. Um, and uh, I'm really here to give uh, the young Mr. Grace uh, speech. Uh, when I did that to the, uh, to the policy exchange staff, I realized they were all too young to have watched Are You Being Served? Uh, and therefore to appreciate that I just wanted to tell them they were all doing very well. Uh, you're all doing very well uh, to be backing an organization that I think has made great strides uh, in the last 18 months uh, that has um, concentrated its work on some of the most important new areas of thinking on the centre-right, into livable cities, uh, the role of the law, uh, and capitalism for the many. Uh, and we've organised our work in that way and achieved, I think, um, a lot of uh, focus and therefore a lot of innovation in policy ideas. And so I'm very excited about what we've been doing under Dean's uh, tutelage. Uh, but I think it's going to be very important because the coming year is going to be a severe intellectual challenge as well as a big political challenge. I don't think there's ever been a moment where both on the international front and on the domestic front some of the ideas uh, of the centre and centre-right have come under the kind of pressure that they're coming under at, at the moment. And so it's wonderful that uh, you are here and that we've organised our uh, typical uh, policy exchange um, weather, uh, which has, seems to have graced us year after year and which we're very lucky to have. Uh, so I wanted to thank you uh, and also to, do to, to thank uh, three sets of other people. I want to thank Michael Spencer um, for two things. First of all, for, uh, for him and ICAP, sponsoring this uh, party uh, and for uh, doing so um, uh, so generously to make it the event that it has been, uh, but also for the role that he's played in, in making sure the Conservative Party was electable and modernising. And I, I don't think his role, which is, was absolutely central, is often enough talked about. I also want to thank Cerno, who backed this event as well. And then finally, I want to thank the Prime Minister for being here he has so many things to do, so many calls on his time. It's hugely appreciated that he gave the time and um, the, the, the yeah. sort of uh, moral support that he does by being here. Uh, I know that he values our, our work, uh, but there are lots of ways of expressing that, including two-line letters. Uh, for uh, When you see the Prime Minister's diary, uh, you realise what a sacrifice it is to give any of it uh, to come to an event like that. So we're very, very lucky, and we're very grateful that you're here, David. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Prime Minister. I must say, looking at the, uh, I don't know how many of you looked at the wonderful Prime Minister's questions uh, this afternoon, one gets a full sense of the ra enormous range of topics which a Prime Minister addresses. But as the media commentators said today, it was an unusual PMQs today. I must say, I've never heard before the Prime Minister, whom I've heard over many years discourse over a great many issues, talk with such complete authority over the policy towards the export of pig semen to China. <laughs> that was a first. I must say, when you become director of policy exchange, you become rather an airy-fairy generalist, so you can't contribute much policy wonkery towards the subject of the sale of pig semen to China. But I can assure you, with these wonderful detailed policies that we have up here, advertised here, our very next study will indeed focus on that vital issue of geopolitical significance of our times. And of course, it's all made possible by the policy exchange staff. And uh, that's why we're here today. We're able to accomplish all of this. I'd like to say a particular thank to my deputy, Mark McGregor, to Nick Faith, our Director of Communications, and to Harriet McKenzie, the events organizer who has done all of this brilliantly, all the work behind the big top that you see everything looking seamless now. So please join me in thanking them as well. It's because of employees like them, friends like you, that we're able to accomplish what we do, and preeminently, as Danny said, because of the generous support that we've enjoyed over so many years from our earliest days of the present Prime Minister. And I say it because amongst those of you here 
who know him well. He's been phenomenally loyal. He's been phenomenally supportive. And above all, I want to say that he's the right person in the right place at the right time for all of this, for us and for so many others. So I want to say a particular thank you because of your steadiness of nerve, your willingness to come here at this busy time. We know that it can't get better than this with this weather which has held so superbly with you here. So thank you, Prime Minister. We look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean, and apologies for the, the pig semen, but I've said we're in a global race. And there are times when whatever it takes is the important thing to remember. I've often remarked that I've actually, since being Prime Minister, taken a trade mission to every country in the world, including two to China, every G20 country in the world. I haven't yet made it to Argentina. Something is holding me back, but who knows? Perhaps after the World Cup, I'll make it there as well. I've got a lot to thank you for tonight at Policy Exchange. I want to thank you, first of all, for the place, for existing... Not everybody knows this, but uh, after three bruising election defeats, a group of us got together, mainly in policy exchange, mainly eating cold pizza ordered by Daniel Finkelstein. And there were some phenomenally bright people in the room. We had Nicholas Bowles, we had George Osborne, we had Michael Gove, we had Daniel Finkelstein. None of them ever stopped talking. Uh, but as far as I could see, and I was the quiet one eating the pizza on the floor. As far as I can see, they had some pretty bright ideas about what needed to happen on the centre-right of British politics, so I stole all their ideas, took up the ball and ran with it, and the rest, as they say, is history. So I've got a lot to, th a lot to thank Policy Exchange for the place. I also want to thank Policy Exchange for the people. There have been a huge number of people who worked in Policy Exchange and who've come on and worked in the Conservative Party or worked in government, You've given us ministers, you've given us thinkers, you've given us policy makers, you've given me quite a lot of my policy unit. You've also helped with that uh, now quite familiar career progression from think tank to special advisor to career psychopath, which we've seen uh, a little bit out in the news. Um, actually, I don't think he was one of yours, to be fair. Um, no claim, no blame. No claim, no blame. I want to thank you very seriously for the policies. You know, you have been working incredibly hard over the last decade to generate really good ideas on the centre-right of challenges that needed to be met. You know, the work you did on police accountability was absolutely groundbreaking, and you can see how much of that has been put in place under this government with real change and an absolutely brilliant Home Secretary driving that work forward. You've done some revolutionary work on school reform, giving schools greater independence, the whole free school movement. And we have, in Michael Gove, a brilliant, radical education secretary putting those measures into place. You made some very strong points about how we're not building enough houses, how we needed to reform our planning system. And you can see, with Nicholas Bowles now, one of your alumni as planning minister, real changes being made and a sense that Britain can build infrastructure, can build houses and can enable people to own their own homes once again. Dean, you have done some incredibly important work on how we best combat extremism, how we build a more integrated and united nation, and that has had a huge influence. So I want to thank you for the place, the people, the policies, but I also want to set you this challenge. Thinking and ideas are absolutely vital for modern political parties. When parties stop thinking, they stop winning. The battle of ideas is as important as the battle for airtime, the battle for votes, the battle for constituencies, the battle for influence. The battle of ideas is absolutely vital and will be in the years ahead. And one of the things that's happened over the last four years is I would argue the centre-right has won the economic argument in perhaps a more comprehensive way than at any time I can remember in my political lifetime. Those who said to us, you can't cut the deficit, you can't cut spending, it'll all be a disaster, the economy won't grow, are literally having to eat their words as they see the British economy power ahead, growing at 3%, creating 2 million jobs in the private sector, M many more jobs than were necessary just to soak up the loss of jobs in the public sector, so we have 1.7 million more people in our country in work today than when I became Prime Minister. And what my ambition is, 
is for us to win the other big arguments out there in British politics in the same way that the centre-right has won that key economic argument. And let me just say what a couple of them are. We need to make sure we win the argument that competition, choice, diversity, the independent sector are vitally important in providing world-class public services in our country. There's still a huge argument between centre-right and left over this issue. And if we want a first-class health service, if we want really great schools for our children, if we want a country of genuine social mobility, we need to win that argument as comprehensively as we won the argument over the economy. We need to win the argument that is close to your heart, Dean, I know, about how we fight extremism. There were those under the last government and before that who seemed to think it was okay to tolerate extremist language, extremist rhetoric, extremist mindsets, as long as you never tolerated violent extremists. Almost like saying, uh, you know, it's, you can be okay with uh, BNP, it's only really Combat 18 you've got to worry about. We wouldn't accept that argument when it comes to fascists in our country, so we shouldn't accept that argument when it comes to Islamist extremist, extremism in our country. And I think it is absolutely vital that we make this argument and win this argument as comprehensively as we have over the economy. I also want us to win what I think is going to be an absolutely massive argument over the next five to ten years in our world, and that is about globalization, technology, and free trade. There will be those who will look at trading partnerships and agreements between Europe and America and trading agreements around the world who will say the combination of these agreements with the advance of technology and globalization are going to hollow out our economies, are going to hollow out middle-income jobs. I believe this is completely untrue. I don't think we should be making an accommodation with the opponents of free trade, with the proponents of protectionism. I believe we should be taking them on and beating them in argument. If we want Britain to be a major success story in this century, and I believe that we can be, Yes, we must play to our strengths, build on our science base, our universities, our brilliant industries, make sure we train people with the skills for the jobs of the future. But we should also be at the forefront of making the argument for opening markets, for welcoming overseas investment, for making sure Britain is one of the most open and welcoming economies anywhere in our world. There's going to be an enormous fight over this issue of free trade deals, globalization and technology. And I want to make sure the centre-right is right out there taking on the sceptics, the doubters and the naysayers and saying this is actually a key way we're going to build prosperity for our country and for our world. So thank you for what you do at Policy Exchange. You give us the intellectual fuel for our tank. Um, you're a charity, so I probably can't go any further than that. But um, it has been pointed out to me that there are only about 326 days to go before the next election, but who's counting? And we need you to put as much intellectual fuel into our tank and into our manifesto and into our proposals because I believe we can win those big arguments. Arguments about public services, arguments about how we bring our country closer together, arguments about how we compete and succeed in this global world. That is what excites me and fires me up about the next year. Give us the ideas, help us put that fuel in the tank and we will deliver for you a stronger better country. Thank you very much indeed.